I decided to write Healthy Appetite based on a massive frustration I was having with the industry and actually partly to do with social media. I'm a massive fan of Instagram. Every time I go onto Instagram, I'll be scrolling down and I come across these sort of like clean eating hashtags, fit food, things that were sort of really, I thought, taking the sort of love and passion out of genuine cooking. And you know, I've been writing about healthy eating for over eight years now. And uh, suddenly all this stuff was coming over from Los Angeles, which was about all the new sorts of superfoods. And we were starting to get huge fears. And I find it sort of quite fear mongering about allergens. You know, obviously there are genuine allergies out there. You know, we all know that. But you know, sort of, I think it was becoming quite a trend to eat. Um, and again, a hashtag trend to have gluten-free food, wheat-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, you know. And then all of a sudden you're starting to see things even to expand into sort of veganism. And I didn't really think people really understood why they were doing this. It was sort of almost, not just for trend, but because they felt that it was healthier. You know, I mean, like I said, I've been writing about, about healthy food for a very long time and I've always worked with nutritionists and I really feel like I've got a massively pragmatic, quite sensible approach to healthy eating. Somebody who wants to eat well, you know, I want to look after my body, but I also love food. I have a healthy appetite. I want to eat like a, a piglet because I enjoy it so much. So it was sort of like trying to find, I wanted to find a happy medium, but I also was fascinated with a lot of the techniques that were coming out. So spiralizing cauliflower rice, a lot of these superfoods, um, chia, lukuma, maca, you know, I hadn't used some of these things before and I wanted to really get to grips with them. So I wanted to see as a real chef what I could do with them. It turns out they're still disgusting. <laughs> so, you know, I had a good play around with some things. And, you know, I, I guess this is my interpretation of how I feel about healthy. Healthy is not just about nourishing your body, although first and foremost it is but it's also about having a healthy mental attitude towards food and allowing yourself to enjoy food, enjoy the recipe making process, enjoy cooking, enjoy the process of bringing people together, sort of sitting elbow to elbow. And I want people to understand that if you eat this way, you're not gonna put on weight, you're actually probably gonna nourish your body better. It might take longer to lose weight if that's your ambition, but you will generally have a much healthier body for it. I mean, Skinny Weeks for me was a sort of extension from Cook Yourself Thin. What I wanted to do with that was sort of um, show how I genuinely live, which is towards the 80-20 rule, which is very much reflected in Healthy Appetite. I eat cons considerately 80% of the time, by which I mean, you know, I, what I'd like, I like to nourish my body more. I will think about eating more fruit and vegetables, you know, eating better proteins, but you know, less but better quality proteins, eating less but better quality carbohydrates. You know, and, and trying to sort of feed your body in a nourishing way. That's what healthy means to me. But then also sort of that 20% of the time having a glass of wine, you know, being able to have some sugar and not feel wrecked with guilt for it. Eating, I mean, to be honest with you, I still think wheat and dairy go into my 80% of, of, of the things, not the 20. You know, so it be, but eating all of the food groups and, and not feeling sort of bad by it. But, you know, and, and then on a weekend, for, me, for example, like on a Sunday, I, I, I hate the term having a, a sort of, um, how do they call it? It's like having a, what's the day off called in food? Yeah, I hate the term having a cheat day. I think it feels really, again, it's sort of like fit food, eat clean, cheat day. It feels so clinical. You know, I just think, like the idea of if you're being considered, and I hate the word good as well, but if you're being considered 80% of the, the time, 20% of the time, what the heck, just live a bit. My philosophy is that whatever you're cooking, if, it's, if you're cooking and eating everything from scratch, everything you know and you recognise in that food is, you know, all fresh ingredients or, or ingredients which are, are pure, then, you know, it doesn't matter if you're having fried chicken because you're making it yourself or you know where all of those things have come from. You know, it is good for you. It might be fattening, but it's good for you. As a cook, there are certain bits of kit that I can't live without. So, a spiralizer. I love a mandolin, and I'll show you why in a bit. A uh, good chopping board and good knives, for me, are the most important thing. You know, uh, those are the two bits of kit I couldn't live without. But for healthy eating, some really good non-stick pans, you know, I use Le Creuset, the sort of tough non-stick uh, range, which is fantastic, it's really durable, you don't need much fat when cooking with it. 
I love Falcon. I really love Falcon, actually. That's like one of my favorite brands. I also love, as far as big kit goes, I live by Vitamix and I live by Thermomix. Now, they're two different bits of kit. They're really expensive and it's, it's one of those things that if it is the dream, but if you're gonna get either one of those, go for a Vitamix because it's just a, it's almost like horsepower blender. It's so hardcore. So if you're making a smoothie or a soup, everything's obliterated. You know, you know when you used to have to sieve your soups and to get them really, really, really sort of really silky and, and velvety, you don't have to with a Vitamix. It does all the hard work for you. A Thermomix is something which is, it's sort of like a very chefy piece of kit. It does everything from peeling garlic cloves all the way through to blending. It works almost in the same way as a general food processor, but it also works like a, a liquidizer as well. But it also heats, it's got a thermostat on it, so you can actually cook things like hollandaise. It really is one of the best bits of kitchen equipment, but it is so extortionate. It is one of those luxury, luxury products.